This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can de design this uh, infographic using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'm going to minimize this image and we'll get started here in Inkscape and by the way if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons I'll have a link to that information in the description. So let's start out by making sure that the view is set to custom and then we're going to zoom in at one to one and then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu and we're going to want Last Selected chosen from the drop down and then open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients and Stroke menu. So the first thing we're going to create is the little circles here, the numbered circles here that you see in the center. So let's grab the Circles and Ellipses tool and let's hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And we'll go to the Select tool. Uh, I'm going to bring the opacity of this down about in half and I'm going to come up here to this little lock icon and turn this on and where it says W which is width I'm just going to highlight that whatever that number is in there just highlight that and type in 225 instead and then hit enter so this pick so this uh, this circle is 225 pixels wide and high then we'll right click that go to duplicate we'll turn that red and I'm going to make this 150 pixels so I'll get rid of that hit 150 and then hit enter and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black circle and we're going to center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. So what we could do now is click off of the graphic to deselect everything and let's take just this black circle right here and we're going to duplicate that but instead of right clicking it and going to duplicate we're just going to hit control D like that and then hold shift and alt and click on the black circle right where the red circle is so it selects the red circle as well. And then we'll come down here to the align menu and click on um, align left edges of objects to the right edge of the anchor. We're going to click on that so it puts it there like that. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And we'll take this red circle, right click that, go to duplicate, hold shift, click on, click on the, uh, the black circle, center it on the vertical axis. And again, we're going to take this black circle, we're going to duplicate that, control D, hold shift, click on the, uh, the red circle, and again click this button align left edges of objects to the right edge of the anchor just like that. We'll take this red circle control D to duplicate it hold shift click on this black circle center it there on the uh, vertical axis and one more time we'll do this we'll take the black circle control D hold shift click on the red circle align the left edges and we'll do the red circle one more time click on that Control D to duplicate, hold shift, click on the black circle and center it on the vertical axis. So we have our circles here in the middle which are the red circles and the black circles are going to make up this colored stripe going in and out of these circles here. So let's let's take this red circle right here, we'll duplicate that, hit Control D and hold shift and click on the black circle behind it and just go to path difference and what that did was it punched a hole through the center of it the size of that red circle so that's what we want to do to the rest of these circles click on the red circle control D hold shift click on the black circle path difference and again we're going to do the same thing to these two control D hold shift click on the black circle path difference and one more time control D hold shift click the black circle and go to path difference all right, so the next step we have to do is we're going to take the intersection of each of these um, black rings right here. So let's click on this black ring, hold shift and click on that black ring, and we'll go to we'll hit control D to duplicate that and we'll go to path intersection. And then we'll turn that green. And we're going to do the same thing to these two. Click on that, then hold shift, click on this one, control D, path intersection, turn that green. One more time, click on this, hold shift, click on that, control D, path, intersection, and we'll turn that green. So we want to, what we want to do now is, let's click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to add um, uh, a stopping point. And a st Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's click on this green intersection here, and we'll duplicate that, control D, then hold shift and click on this black ring and go to path, difference and what that did was it punched a hole through that the size of that intersecting shape there and again we could click on this one right click duplicate and do the same thing to this ring hold shift click on that ring path 
difference. And we did the same thing to that side of that ring as well. And we want to do this to every ring where it's touching the green shape. So let's click on this green shape, Control D, hold Shift, click on that the black ring and go to Path Difference. Click on this green shape, Control D, hold Shift, click on the black ring, Path Difference. Click on this green shape, Control D, hold Shift, click on the black ring, Path Difference. And then finally, we could do this one more time. Duplicate that, hold Shift, click on the black ring, Path Difference. So now we have all these individual shapes here like that. And what we want to do now is, what I was just explaining a minute ago, this, this, this shape going in and out of the circles here, it stops right here at the top, and then it ends right here at the bottom. So in order to do that, let's create a rectangle that's half the size of this black ring, which is the height is 225, so half of that would be 112.5. So let's come over to the squares and rectangles tool, and let's draw a rectangle going over this like that. And we just want to go to the select tool, and we want to make sure that the height is, I think it was 112.5, and then hit enter. And I'm just going to make that, make sure it's wider than the circle. And where did I have? I had it starting up here. Okay, so let's take this, uh, this uh, green rectangle, hold shift, click on this black ring. We're going to center it on the vertical axis, and then align the bottom edges, and then click off of it to deselect everything. And then again, we'll take this rectangle, we'll hit control D to duplicate that, hold shift, click on this black ring over here, and we're going to center that on the vertical axis, and then align the top edges like that. And then we can go to path, the difference. And we can click on this green rectangle, hold shift, click on this black ring, go to path, difference. And what we want to do now is we want to click on, actually, you know what, let's go to path, break apart, and then hold shift and click on that black object. And there should be these little fragments left over here that are selected. And just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And we'll do the same thing right here. We'll click on this black ring. We'll go to path, break apart. And then we'll hold shift and click on this, black, uh, this bottom part of the black ring to deselect that. And we'll, all that's going to be left selected is the top part of that black ring and all these little fragments here. We'll just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And there we have that. So we'll do the same thing over here. We'll go to path, break apart, hold shift, click on this top part of the black ring to deselect it. So we just have the bottom ring and all those little fragments selected. Press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And then we'll do this one more time right here. We're just going to break this apart. Path, break apart. Hold shift, click on the big black object, so just the fragments are selected right there. I don't know why that happens. It's something to do with um, you know the Inkscape program itself. Mathematically, it shouldn't. It technically shouldn't happen, but it does. So um, we'll just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. So what we have now is we have the shape of that stripe going in and out of those circles. So let's click and drag over all of this, and then hold shift and click on each of those red circles to deselect them. So we just have our stripe object selected, and we'll unify them all together by going to path, union. And there we have our stripe going in and out of the circle. So the next step would be to create these circles um, going inside of here. So let me uh, click on that circle, hold shift and click on the other three so we have them all selected. Bring the opacity up, and I'm going to make this a light shade of gray, maybe 10%, and then click off of it to deselect everything. And if you notice here, these circles have a little bit of a bevel around the edges, and I'm going to do that by creating a gradient. So let's click on that circle. We'll give that a linear gradient, and uh, press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool, and click on this stop over here to the right. Bring the opacity all the way up. And under the Fill tab, if you're under the HSL tab, there should be the HSLA columns. And I'm just going to take this, a col this L column and slide it all the way to the right. And uh, I'm going to bring this, the white stop to the top, and bring the darker stop to the bottom. And then once I get it to the bottom, I'll hold Control so the line goes straight down like that. And we're going to give these shapes the same gradient. So let's click on that, go to Linear Gradient, choose that from the drop-down. Again, we'll take this lighter shade, put it up here, hold Control. Take this bottom, take this other stop and put it at the bottom. Do the same thing to the rest of these circles. Linear gradient, go to the drop down, choose our gradient. Just like that. And one more time. So we have all of our little circles there. And to create the, um, the bevel effect, what I'm going to do is I'll go back to the select tool. 
I'll right click that circle and go to duplicate and I'm going to flip it vertically with this button up here flip selected objects vertically and then hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag to scale it in about that much and if you zoom in you'll see it kind of creates this effect of like a like a little bit of a bevel maybe I'll make that a little bigger that's pretty good and we can just duplicate that control D hold shift click on this circle and center it on the vertical axis click on this one control D hold shift click on this circle center it on the vertical axis and one more time click on this one control D hold shift click on this circle center it on the vertical axis and then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything so let's see what's next here the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in I'm gonna color this all in right here so let's take this uh, our, our uh, black stripe here will bring the opacity all the way up and let's give it a linear gradient and we'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool we'll click on this stop to the right bring it all the way to the right and what we want to do is we want to create new stops for the gradient in each one of these circles so let's come over here and click on the line if you want to zoom in you can use plus and minus on the keyboard um, bring that back up let's come over here to where this gradient line is and double click the line wherever the black part is and it'll create a new stop. And then we can take that stop and put it in the center of this circle. Double click this line again to create a new stop. Put this stop over here at the center of that circle. Let me zoom out a little bit and create another stop. Double click the line wherever the black section is and bring that stop over here to the center. And one more time, we'll create, double click the line to create another gradient, put it over here. So the colors I used, now we can go into each one of these stops individually and each give them color. So the gradients I used is red, yellow, green, blue. So let's start out with red. We'll click on that stop. I'm going to make that a dark shade of red, maybe something like that. And I'll click on this stop. I'll make that a, a more solid red, like a more regular shade of red. I'll click on this stop right here. I'll make this uh, yellow. And what was the next one? Green and then blue. Okay, so we'll click on this stop and I'll make this green and I'll click on this stop and make this uh, make this blue and then take this last stop and just make that a darker blue maybe uh, like that that looks pretty good okay so um, I'll just go back to the select tool let me press one to zoom back out to a hundred percent and we'll take a look at what we have next so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create these little indicator points here for each uh, point of the circle. So let's um, come over to the squares and rectangles tool, click on that, and I'm going to click and drag to create a little rectangle going right there, like that. And then uh, I'll grab the circles and ellipses tool, and let me zoom in on this a little bit. I'll hold control and shift and click and drag to create a little circle like that. Go back to the select tool, put this right here, and then hold shift, click on the uh, rectangle, and then while still holding shift, click on this circle and we're going to center all of that on the vertical axis so now that little indicator pin is aligned with the circle and then we can click off it to deselect everything so let's take the circle hold shift take the rectangle unify it together by going to path union and then we're going to make this the same shade of red that whatever this point is right here so let's press F7 to grab the dropper the dropper is also over here in the toolbar but you can just press F7 to grab it and I'm gonna I'm gonna click and drag right where that pin is to make sure it's the same shade of red so it blends in nicely. I'll go back to the select tool and I'm just going to right click this and go to duplicate and hold shift click on this circle center that on the vertical axis and then hold shift and click on that circle to deselect it so we just have the pin selected and again F7 to get back to the dropper we'll make this the same shade that that green is and then we can go to the select tool I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate and then I'm going to flip this vertically like that and I'm going to put this over here down here and then hold shift and click on the circle right there and just make sure it's centered on the vertical axis hold shift click on the circle to deselect it and we'll press F7 to get the dropper and we're going to make this the same shade as that yellow and uh, one more time we'll do this so let's go to the select tool right click that go to duplicate hold shift click on the circle center that on the vertical axis hold shift click on the circle to deselect it and we'll press F7 to get back to our dropper tool make that the same shade of blue and let me press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to hundred percent and then we can go back to the select tool so uh, let's click off of that to deselect everything let me just take a look at what I have next here 
Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a little bit of a drop shadow beneath each of these circles to make it look like they're raised up a little bit above this wavy line. So um, let's click on the larger circle in the background there and hit Control D to duplicate it. And we'll come over down here, make this black. And I'm just going to press down on the keyboard once to move that down one step, maybe twice. I'll click at another step like that. And let me lower that, lower selection one step, that button right there. Let me lower that a couple of times. One, two. So it goes beneath there. And I'm just going to give that a little bit of a blur, maybe 3.2% um, blur, something like that. Bring the opacity down so it's not so harsh. And I say that looks pretty good right there. And then we can just duplicate that by hitting Control D and then hold shift and click on this circle, center that up on the vertical axis, click off of it to deselect, and then click on just this blurred shape right here and lower that a couple of steps, one, two. We'll do it again for these other two circles. Hit Control D, hold shift, click on this circle, uh, center it, click off of it to deselect, click on just this uh, black circle right here, lower that two steps, one, two, and then finally, Control D, hold shift, click on this circle, center it on the vertical axis, click off of it to deselect, and then just take this one right here and lower that two steps. And let me take a look at what I have next here. So now we can start adding labels to this. I'm just going to put like one, two, three, and four in there. And uh, I'll go to the text tool, and I'm just going to write zero, one. And I'll come up here to the text editor, and the font I'm going to use is called Lado. We'll use the medium weight. Apply that. I'll make this um, maybe 70% uh, gray. Go to the Select tool, hold Shift, click on the circle, and center that vertical and horizontal axis. Click off to deselect, and again, I'm just going to duplicate this three times, so I'll just hit Control and press D three times. One, two, three. And hold Shift, click on this circle, center it on that axis. Click that one, hold Shift, click on this circle, center it there. And then take this one, hold shift, click on that circle, and center it there. Click off of it to deselect. And then you just go to the text tool and change each number individually. So I'm just going to go ahead and make these the numbers that they are. Go back to the select tool, and let me click off of it to deselect everything. And then we have to create our little uh, labels up here. So for that, I'm just going to duplicate this. Control D, hold Control, bring it up there. Go back to the text tool. I'm just going to write in for this tutorial. I'm just going to write in label. And then I'm going to create some more text underneath it. Uh, description can go here. And I'm going to center that text. Go to the select tool, and I'm going to make that the same shade that the other text is, which is 70% gray. I'm just going to hold Control and Shift and scale that down about that much. Put this right about here put this label up there and hold shift and click on the other text item so we have them both selected and then hold shift and click on this pin and just make sure that it's all centered on the vertical axis and then we could hold shift and click off of that object deselected so we just have our text uh, selected and we can group them together by clicking on the group button and uh, to make things quicker I'm just going to duplicate this a few times and just center it on each of these pins so let me hit control D to duplicate that Hold Shift, click on this green pin, center it on the vertical axis. Hold Shift, click on the uh, green pin to deselect it, and we're going to uh, duplicate this text. Control D, put this down here. Hold Shift, click on this yellow pin, center it on the vertical axis. Hold Shift, click on the yellow pin to deselect it. And I'm actually just going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to hold Control and move that down. It has to be about the same spacing on the bottom as it is on the top. So. Uh, you can just eyeball it, it looks pretty good. Uh, hit Control D to duplicate it. Hold Shift, click on the uh, blue pin, and center on the vertical axis. And click off of it to deselect everything. And let me just take a look here to make sure I didn't miss anything important. Uh, it looks like I covered everything. The last final step would be to click and drag over all of it and group it together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a backdrop behind it. So I'll go to the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw. A rectangle over the entire shape. We'll go to the select tool, bring the opacity all the way up, lower that one step beneath the uh, the object, and I'm just going to make this a really light shade of gray like that. And hold shift and click on the infographic. 
and we can just make sure it's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect, and maybe you can just take just this rectangle, control and shift, and click and drag to make it a little bigger like that. And that's pretty much it. That's the gist of it. That's how you can go about creating this sort of infographic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.